What is up people, this is VirusHQ and in this video I'll be talking about the PN532 NFC RFID module. Now this module was provided to me by HiLetGo, so major props to them. So let's get started. So the package that I got, it had a few components in it. The first one was the PN532 RFID chip and this is the most important part of the whole thing. Next it did come with 4 female to female cables, a key fob style and a card style ISO 14443A card and key fob and a few connectors. Just going a bit in depth for the key fobs and the key cards. If you look at this image, what's inside is just a coil and a memory chip. Now that chip stores data on it and the coil itself is going to be used to provide power to the chip so that it can send its data. And it has three modes of connection. One is SPI, one is I squared C and the last one is HSU which is high speed UART. Now in this video, I won't be talking about HSU, I'll only be talking about the SPI and the I2C communication with an Arduino Nano. But the same thing works with an ESP8266 as well. I'll just show you the different wiring diagram that you, would, you might need to use. Now this module, it's based off of a 805 and microcontroller and the connection scheme is really nice. Like it gives you a lot of connecting options and there are like two dip switches which allow you to configure how you want to talk with the controller. And this module will have a range of anywhere from 5 to 7 centimeters. And since this is an NFC module as well, it can read MyFair cards, ISO cards, Innovation Jewel cards, Felicia Clark cards. And since it already has like an inbuilt PCB antenna, so you won't need an extra one. Now this is really handy when it comes to making projects for computers, for security purposes or, or just for like verification and stuff. If you want to play with it, this can read and write cards and hence like you could make your own card system and stuff like that now let's get to the code so if you look closely like this is the one which is going to show the SPI one first thing you would need to do is include the library for this so just go to click on manage libraries and search for PN532 now this library I already installed it but you won't so you will just need to install it and once you have it installed, just open its open up its examples folder and get the read my fair or read my fair classic. I just use the my fair classic because I know that my cards are the classic ones. Now for the SPI connection, this is the wiring diagram I used. Now if you look at the code. We include wire.h, spi.h and the pn532 library. Next we define the SPI pin. So SAK, MISO, MOSI and SS. Those are, all, uh, those are defined on pin number 13, 12, 11 and 10 respectively. Then we need to add the line for the library to know where the pins are connected and hence they are all added as Adafruit PN532 NFC and all the pins. Next in setup we just seal begin at a baud rate of 115,200. Then we just print a hello. Then we just start the NFC. Then we try to get the version data from it and the line for that is version data equal to nfc.get firmware version and if it ain't able to find it it will just keep on in this loop and just wait and the next line is if it finds it it will just skip this and hence come to the next line where, where it will just print it found the chip and there will print the version data and the firmware version and then you need to configure it to read RFID tags. So for that you would need to add nfc.samconfig and then it will just wait for an ISO card. Next, 
in the loop there are just a few things to find where's the U, uh, UID which is the stored buffer on the MyFair card success which is just an integer and UID length which can be a 4 or 7 bytes depending on the card then we just try to read it for success equal to NFC dot read passive target ID the, the card type the UID and the length and if the answer to this is 1 it will go in this loop where it will say that it found a card and then it will print its length and the value of it I'll show it to you in a bit how it looks like then if it finds the UI uh, then if the UID length is equal to 4 which I just made it because I know my cards are just gonna have a length of 4 it it will just print all the value UID 0, 1, 2 and 3 which are the 4 bytes which are stored on the chip on the card and it will print the carded value so let's look at its output let's just open serial monitor it found the chip now it's waiting for a card I'll just pick a I'll just take my key fob thing and just place it cl place it close to it and it will read it so it says that it found an ISO 14443A card and the length and the value and the decimal value for it and the same thing will happen with my key card as well it will just have a different set of values and a different the decimal output then now that's it for the SPI but if you want to conserve on wires or something you would just need to use the I squared C communication and for that we'll just need to include wire.h and adafruit since we won't be using SPI we can just remove that line then we need to define the IRQ and reset GPIO pins and we will be using this wiring diagram once we define the IRQ and reset pins to 2 and 3 we'll just initialize it and just give it the IRQ and reset uh, GPIO locations next is the same thing all over again the only difference was this line and once that line's changed, the whole code remains the same. And if we look at the output, it's still gonna be the same. It's still gonna be similarly fast. Like you won't notice a difference in the communication speeds on on information this small. Now, if you wanted to use the same thing with an ESP8266 or an ESP32, for an ESP8266, you'd be the SCK GPIO would be GPIO14. For MISO, you'll be using GPIO12. For MOSI, you'll be using GPIO13. And for SS, you'll be using GPIO15. The wiring diagram is shown as here. That's for the SPI. But if you wanted to go through the I squared C or C route, you, you can define IRQ and reset to any pins other than GPIO 16. And the SDA pin would be at GPIO 4 and SCL would be at GPIO 5. Now these GPIO pins, they are for an ESP8266 module. But if you are using the ESP32, just use the wiring diagram to like, connected to the GPIO pins. That's it for this video. The next video would be me covering this for Raspberry Pi. So thank you people for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel. Share it. Click on the notification icon. And see you next time.